Right. So the answer of I didn't want to go there doesn't apply. That's right. I didn't want to go there. I didn't want to get caught. Right. That's where all the planning what came in. What a fucking piece of shit. Yep. You were a predator. Yeah, as my son, he fucking tell you that. Well, you didn't say it. I did. No. You said it, but I know. I know. I think you should say it yourself. I was a predator. Hi, beautiful lady. How's it How going? I'm good. Well, it's going better than what it was. Okay, that's a good start. It's been, it's been, it's been rough. Mm-hmm. It's, been, uh, it's been, uh, kind of a rough day. A little hungover today? No. Oh. No, I just, just all the talking that I've done with Winnie and with Emma and Maria and in class. Yeah. It's been hard. Okay. Well, what did you guys talk about? I figured out I need to stop my bullshit. It's just a lot of things that that have happened to me is bothers me. It bothers me and I, and I put it off on other people and I get hateful because of things that have happened to me on the internet. Because of the internet, fucking how to deal with the internet, how to deal with my thoughts, and how to live with the crap that I did, and, and why I go over Tony and Wendy's, and how I don't want to go over Tony and Wendy's, but I wind up going over there, and how I can't stand Wendy. I really can't stand Tony either. Okay, well, why don't why don't we kind of start there? Why did you go there yesterday? I'm just bored. Okay, so I got bored because I had plenty to do. I don't know. I don't. Marie asked me why I went there. I told her I don't know. So I was just bored, and I just felt like going over there. You know, I, you know, I can't stand. It don't make sense to me because. As much as she's fucked me over and, and Wendy, she just grosses me out. Okay, so I'm, I'm seeing as that I, I promised you that I Well, I mean, seeing I as know. as you're talking about how you don't like them, and it's kind of well, it's, strange that you would go there. Well, so what see, what is not... better hang on a second, what is better what, like what are you getting out of it then? That makes it I, better to go there than to not go there. I like Tony, and, I, and Tony's really the only one that I like to drink with because he doesn't get stupid, and, and you know, we just sit there and relax and have a few beers. Okay, well, and, number one, it's not just a few beers, and you know that. No, 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 you're no. going to start there. You're again, you know, if you're going to be honest, you need to be completely transparent. And you can't just brush it off as if I'm just having a few beers. I go over there. I like to go over there because it's fun. But yeah, I don't like them because they take advantage of me. And a lot of bullshit happens every time I go there. So it's really contradictory, the stuff that you're saying. That's actually actually exactly the words I need to use because that's exactly the way it is. It's exactly the way I feel. What you just said is exactly the way I feel. I enjoy myself when I'm over there and I enjoy drinking with Tony and I do have more than a few beers. How many did you have yesterday? Say to get away from the trash. Huh? How many did you have yesterday? I had seven. Are you sure about that? I think think so. What about when you got home? I had, no, I had, I had eight. You had eight when you got home? No. I had three over at Tony's and I bought a six pack and came home. So let me so ask nine. you, let me ask you, what, what is it that goes on in your head that makes it okay for you to get in your car after you've been drinking? Ignorance. 
That's not good enough. It's not okay to get my car after I've been drinking. I know that. That's okay, why I don't so... know why I go over Tony to drink because I, this is another thing. When he doesn't fucking drink anything, the, I don't know why it's fucking stupid. I've got so much to fucking lose and to do something so stupid as, as go over there and then drive after I've been drinking. I've got so much to fucking lose. And I went through that with Maria today and it's it blows my mind why I would be so stupid. Well, why does it blow your mind? It can't because surprise you. You do it all the time. No, I never used to be like that. What do you mean never used to be? Are we talking 20 years ago? Yeah. Okay. Well, before I got incarcerated. Okay, you're saying I was never like that. But since you've been there, you've done it a lot. I know. So I want to know um, what makes that okay? What makes it okay it every single time you do it? It's not okay. It's not okay for me to do it. So what do you tell yourself in every, then? In, in every sense of the word, it's not okay for me to do it. But what do you I tell yourself? Somebody, I, 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 I could really ruin my life and somebody else's life. It's not okay for me to do it. And I know okay. it. I don't know so why. So what, you what do you tell yourself every time you're going to do it? Because you know, you know when you make the decision that you're going to go over there, you stop at the store, you buy everything that you guys are going to be eating and drinking. You drive over there. You know that you're going to have to get home at some point. What is the plan? The plan is as soon as you're done with the last drop, you get in your car and you start driving. Yeah. And just to get it, usually it's to get away from Tony one day. Okay. So then we're going to, so then you're going to stop there too, because you had mentioned that you like to drink with Tony and now you're saying you want to get away from them. There's a lot of so much Tony that I don't want to get away from us. Wendy. Wendy. She just. She's so selfish, self centered. If you go over there without buying something for Wendy, Wendy doesn't want you there. Uh, that's why, another reason I don't know why I go over there. I just don't like him. Well, I, I like he, Tony. I like Tony, but I. I I don't like the way he acts with taking advantage of me and uh, with Wendy being so disrespectful to, to everybody. It's not, it's not, unless you're her family. Like her brother go over there, she kisses his ass up and down. Friends mm-hmm. go over there and help him out with shit and, and uh, she treats him like, like the second best to her. If like a woman, she's never had a honest day of work in her life but it seems like everybody owes her I don't understand why I even have anything to do with them I'm not going to anymore because I didn't tell Maria today when I talked to Maria today I told her I, I told her that I couldn't understand that and she said you just you want somebody to hang around and that's understandable but you're hanging around the wrong person I said, yeah, it's something I should have realized years ago. She had me do up a list of reasons why it was a bad idea. To go do you have it. the list? No, she's got the list. Okay. I should have asked her for a copy of it. Was it pretty long? Well, with all the all the, all the things that we were talking about, it, it was a good list. And there was things that I need to to sort out and do right and reasons I need need to not drink and not to go over Tony's, not to hang around Tony. It was the biggest reason was because he takes advantage of me. He doesn't respect me. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not nothing but a free beer to him. Mm-hmm. That and the, someone that he can, he can use for for borrowing tools and to help when he actually can do shit himself. He puts on this fucking pathetic, pitiful story of, ow, my back hurts. And he puts his hand on on his back like it really hurts. And no goddamn well, it doesn't. So you're not going to no associate idea with him anymore? No. At all? 
Uh, he, he's going to come over for the yard sale. I told them they could come over, bring the stuff over for the yard sale. I mean, okay. I still be friends with them, just not hang around with them. I can text with them, but not go over. Okay. Not go over, not drink with them, not buy beer for them. Not, not, I'm not going to let them use my tools. Um, if he wants to use my pressure washer, he can come over here to use it. It's not going over his house. Cause last year, I let him use it, and I brought it over so he could use it. And he was supposed to walk, spray his house down, wash his house down with it. He had the fucking thing there for two months. And I kept telling him, Tony, you going to use that goddamn thing sometime today or this year or what? When he finally used it, it took him six hours to do half of his house. I was, I was so freaking pissed because I wound up all summer without it because he just had it over there. Not doing anything with it, so I'm not gonna let him do that again. He wants to use it again. I tell him you use it over here. You're not you're taking it over your house. <laughs> okay. And what else did Maria say? Why isn't she giving you a breathalyzer? Because she wants me to be able to talk about things. If if I feel like I'm gonna drink, she wants me to be able to talk to someone. Okay. So it doesn't matter who it is you talk to. Make sure it's somebody that's close to you that knows what stuff you're going through. Okay. Call me. You can talk to me. So if it's Dwayne, that class, the counselor in class that you, that you want to call, call talk to him. Even if they have a voicemail on his on his machine. Mhm. Uh-huh. So if it's anybody else, and they, somebody else that you want to talk to about things, and then talk to them about it. Mhm. Uh-huh. If you mess up, then at least call me and tell me or text me that that you messed up and you need to talk. But I don't want to mess up. I hate when I mess up because I create a mess. It's like yesterday, I was I was so happy yesterday because me and Roy was working. We got a lot of stuff done, cleaning up the yard and everything. We got a lot of stuff done. And I, was, I was so proud of everything that we got done. Mm-hmm. Then I took it fucked up and went over to homies. When I went took Roy home. I went over to Tony's after that. And I'm sorry I fucked up. Sorry for going over there when I told you I wouldn't. Well, don't apologize to me. Um, all I need to go. I promised you that I wouldn't drink. Yeah, but I, I, I knew it was going to happen. Yeah, I didn't want it to happen. I mean, it's stupid for... Stupid for fucking up. The one thing that I know is that life isn't about being perfect. And there's a difference between, like, I think sometimes you think in terms of being perfect as, like, um, I'm promising that I'm not going to drink again. And I'm not perfect, though, so I'm going to. I'm going to go over Tony's. I'm going to drive drunk. Whatever it is that you're promising, you give yourself a little bit of an out because you say you're not perfect. And there's a difference between things that you know, are just a matter of being human that make us unperfect. And then there's other things that are intentionally done. When you're thinking about an act and then you go and complete it, you can't toss that up and say, well, I'm not perfect. I know I promised, but I'm not perfect. So it's kind of like, I'm not perfect. So I'm not going to be in a good mood every single day. Or I'm not perfect. So sometimes I'll wake up on a Saturday and I don't feel like doing anything. I feel like hanging around, watching Netflix, not doing the whole entire to-do list that I normally have planned. But those types of things are just kind of like human nature. And we toss it up to just going with the day. And it's not a big deal because it's not having a major impact on our life. Yeah, but there are... With me messing up, it has a a major impact on my life. It does. And the other thing along with that is that you're doing things intentionally. The the things aren't just happening. You're not just waking up in the morning drunk. You're driving to the store. You're buying everything with money that you don't have. You're driving over to Tony's. You're sitting there. They're pissing you off because you know that they're taking advantage of you. They're making comments. Wendy's being disrespectful. You get in your car as soon as you're done. You drive drunk, you come home, you start disrespecting everyone, including me. And then the tears start and you say, I don't understand. I'm so sorry. I mean, what, what is there to not understand? It's so clear. 
It's like every single thing. It seems like you do your answer when you're questioned about it is, I don't know. I don't know why. I mean, are you just somebody who's floating in the breeze? Like, oh, the breeze is taking me the other way. I'm going to the liquor store. Oops. A beer. Oh, my gosh. How did this beer get in my hand? And why am I drinking it? I have no idea. See, this is what messes me up, though, because I drink. I wasn't thinking about anything. I was happy. I wasn't thinking about anything from my past. And everything today came out again. Everything that I said to you last night, everything that I that I did, the way I treated you, the way I treated Wendy, the way I just freaking went off the handle. And all I could think about is why does anybody want to have anything to do with me with the fucking past that I had? So fucking charge bothers me so fucking much. Yeah, as it should. I mean, I think that there's there's a lot of people that are going to be in your shoes. Some of them are sitting in prison because they killed someone. Some some people are sitting in prison because they were driving drunk and they killed someone. That could be it. They could have stolen a crap ton of money from someone and now they have that guilt too. They can have charges that aren't, they don't just go away. They're not swept under the rug. And these are the types of things that shouldn't be. What you did should not be swept under the rug ever. Maria tells me that I need to get past it and I need to move on in my life. And all I can tell is that do you realize what I fucking did? Well, she's not talking she about. Says, yeah, I realize what you did, but you. you know, so, yeah, I realize what you did, but you can't kill you and beat yourself up for it all your life. Well, it's there's a difference there, though. There's a difference of saying, I did something terrible. I did something so, so bad. And I can look at the bright side of it, too, and say <laughs> it turned out a lot better than it could have with there being an actual victim that you then would have to be responsible for. But, you know, there's there's a matter of, of drawing a line in the sand and saying there, there's nothing that you can do to go backwards. Are you going to hate it every day? Yes, absolutely. And you should hate it every day. But you have to go on with your life. You have to wake up again the next morning and you have to do all the things that, that make up your life, whether it's take care of your dogs, go to work, talk to your mom, take care of your house. You do have to move on. Absolutely. But there's a difference because there's going to be no forgetting it. And you never, you never should forget. I think that it would be scary if you did forget. If you said, you know what, this is something that I did 10 years ago. Fuck off if you have a problem with it. No, I can't. I can't be like that because I have a problem with it. You should absolutely, and that's, that's good. Not I'm something glad. I ever want to do or ever. Nope. Stop right there. Stop. Stop. Let me. Stop. What I'm saying. You have to, nope. Stop. You have to stop. Wait a second. I'm not letting. I'm not going to let you do this again. You gotta let me finish. No, you have to let me finish first. Okay. I don't want to hear. I didn't want to go. I don't want to hear that. Really, what it comes down to is I didn't want to be that guy who did that. Because that you know, is what I'm saying. Okay, wait a minute. Because you know what that means. You know what people think. You know what people think when they think about you and when they hear about you. You don't want to be that guy, but you were that guy. That's what you have to accept. You can't be in denial and say, I'm not like them. I'm not like the other guys who went there. Because you were. You were exactly like them, Lauren. I know it bothers me. It should bother it you. It bothers me. But here's the thing. I've never in my life wanted to be that guy that did that. You were that guy. That's what you have to I accept. Know. No, that's not so easy to accept though. You have to. You have to accept it. It's not easy to live with. I know. 
but you have to all the time, all of this time that you've been saying to yourself, I didn't want to go there has been blocking you and it's blocking everyone from being able to move on from it too. I would be almost willing to bet that that's the reason why you're still in that class because you're still differentiating yourself from everyone else who's there as if you don't belong and you do. The punishment that you've gone through is well-deserved. The fact that you have to be inconvenienced and have to be on a registry and have to have your picture taken, go through all of this stuff, not being allowed to be like a regular citizen and have access to things like the internet, which is, is something that is pretty needed. You know, it's important for everyday life. I know I use it all the time. I do everything on there, banking, all kinds of stuff. So the fact that you're, you're kind of grounded from that, like you can't have this, you can't have that privilege and that freedom to be able to do it because you can't be trusted until you prove that you can be trusted, legitimately trusted. And I'm not talking about just words because we know that your words have been bullshit this whole time, but I'll say it again because it's really, it's really important. Lauren, you can't say I didn't want to go there anymore. It doesn't, it doesn't work. I know what you're saying. It's not I nice. never, I never want to hear you say that again. I won't say that again. What are you going to say instead? I never wanted to be the guy that did that. That's actually the words that I've always meant to say. I never said it. I think that that even that was going to be too hard for you to say. I think that you really did mean I didn't want to go there. Those were the types of things that you wanted everyone else to hear. Because like I was saying before, you want to differentiate yourself from everyone else. You see people that were on the show like this lurch guy that you talk about, how disgusting. The people who have been been convicted of molesting other children people who have been caught before there was one guy who showed up at the house and then the very next day showed up again not at the same house but it was the same you know this the same operation so there you know there's people there's guys who walked in naked there's guys who brought alcohol and all kinds of stuff i mean but you have to understand that you're no different <laughs> From them. You were just as dangerous. You were a predator. That's not what I wanted, though. I know. Nope. When you say that's not what I wanted, you have to change those words in order for them to be actually correct. But I need you to listen to to what I'm saying, though. I will listen. I will listen, and then I'll correct you. When I was, even when I was sitting there talking on the computer, I never wanted I, in my head i knew i didn't want to go to the to the same house okay what does that mean why not just because i didn't, it was just something to do just sit there and talk to someone and she made me feel like she cared okay but wait a minute after after being so used by my family and feeling like nobody cared okay but wait a minute and that's what kept me talking okay but wait a minute what do you mean you didn't want to go there why not I mean, I did not want to go to the sting house. But why I not? I sit there and talk all, all, all day, but I didn't know why. Because, because I knew in my head that it was wrong. Okay, why was it wrong? Then, because, well, because she was underage. She was 13. Mm-hmm. And it was wrong for me to do that. Right. It was wrong for me to do everything that I did on there. But in my head, I was telling myself, I'm not really going to go there. So I'm just talking to her. Then they got out of hand, doing what I was thinking, and I wanted to do it. Okay. Can I ask you something? And we had touched upon it um, the last time that we talked. The first time that you were talking to her, the very first day, 
when uh, she said she was 13 and you were talking about how you're a good guy, don't talk to any other guys. And then it turned very quickly and you said something like, did you ever hear anything in this room that made you say, wow. And what you were talking about was like, I, I'm assuming that they were, you know, could say something sexual in the, in the regular chat room yes. that you guys were hanging out in. Okay. So that yeah. was your, that was your first line. Yeah. Because that's what you were gunning for. Yeah. So when you're talking about you were feeling low because of experiences that you had with your family and your life was spinning out of control. There was a lot of stuff against you. You had that whole situation with um, Betty's house that happened and you had to, you had to bail out of there. So you went to Nashville and then, um, you know, you were getting on the computer. And so before it started turning into something about being in love with each other, it turned sexual before then. So I want to know, why did that happen? Knowing that she was 13, what turned you on about that? I don't know. I'm being honest with you. I don't know. I want you to think about it then. It did turn you on. This the thing is, I, I, I think about it all the time. Why would I allow myself to do that? Okay. So not only... The, there's two different things. It's not that what I wanted to do. Well, there's two it's different it. things. There's two different things that happened. There is something that is going on in your mind where you're getting turned on by something. And then there's the actual expression of that. So there was something about Kayla that turned you on. You knew in your mind, you're thinking, I'm turned on by this, but I know that I shouldn't. I shouldn't do this. This is pretty out there. I would definitely get in trouble if somebody knew. Um, but I'm turned on. But I still went there. Well, it's not even going there. It, it's the t I'm talking about the very first thing. When you said, did anyone say something that made you say, wow? So it I know, was fresh I was in there, your mind. I, I, I was... Trying to find out if, if she saw anything, anybody say anything sexual in the room. Okay. And that made her say, wow. And why would that be? Because you um, wanted to find out if she liked it. Maybe. I'm not going to, I'm not going to say no, because it's quite possible. That was the reason. I was something messed up at the time. That, I don't know. Fuck. Okay. You're kind of, you're going back not, to the, you're going back to the normal. I hate not understanding it. You're, okay, well, I'm going to help you try to understand it. You're, you're going back to the same things you always say. I was messed up at the time. I don't understand. I didn't want to. And like well, I, I don't said, don't understand things, because I've, I've never been I'm like help that you, but in I'm my help life. You. I've never done that. Lauren, I'm going to help you. Hopefully understand. In order for that to happen, you have to take that away because that is your protection. <laughs> you're using those things to protect you and be like, no, 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 no. Thinking that I'm a child predator is way too scary. So I need to throw on the things of that wasn't me. You know, I was really messed up at the time. A lot of shit happened. My family, blah, 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 blah. That's your protection and you have to take it away. Because I need, I need to help you understand why. I don't understand how I could do something so disgusting when I've spent my whole life protecting kids. Okay. So, so one of the things, up. one of the things that I had mentioned last time too, is that the internet provides a platform or it provided a platform for you to kind of touch into this fantasy that you had in your mind, something that you wouldn't be able to just do in your normal everyday life, because that would be way too scary. Approaching a girl who's 13 years old and talking sexually, saying something that could scare her <laughs> so that she tells someone that's way too much. And that, that's like, there, there would be immediate consequences to that, either by parents or schools, the cops would be knocking at your door, end of story. But somebody who's on the internet, it's, it's 
again, another, another safety net, some, somewhere that you would be able to engage in that and be turned on, be able to talk about stuff that turns you on that you wouldn't normally be able to do. That's where that came into play. Because so it that, wasn't a real thing. No, it's not that it wasn't a real thing, but it wasn't something that you were engaging in, in your, the, with the people around you. So you weren't just going to a playground and chatting it up with a 13 year old girl. You were doing it in the safety of your home where you could hide. And, it, and if something scary happened, like, you know, she, she says that she's scared or her dad gets on or something like that. You could just shut down your computer and completely throw it away or something like that. So I don't know why I didn't think then why, why it wouldn't affect anybody with me just doing that. Okay. So that's the reason so many people. That's the reason why you did it is because you didn't think it was going to affect anybody. More importantly, it wasn't going to affect you directly with the scariest part of the whole scenario is getting caught. Yeah, that's definitely the scariest part of the whole thing, and I know that. Okay. So then being on the internet yep. took that away. So, now that we know that part, I want you to tell me... Part of, I want part you to tell me... How I can bring myself to do that. Well, it, it just ties into what we just talked about. I think it was you felt safe doing it being on the internet made it safe for you. So now that that safety net was there, I want you to tell me what turned you on about Kayla. (laughs) It's because somebody was paying attention to me and not wanting something from me. It never even got to that point though. Not I'm talking about the, I'm talking about the very first time that you talked to her. Because you're talking very about first time. Well, not, okay, and see that's what I'm saying is when I first started talking to her, I really meant to be a just a nice person, just to give her somebody to talk to. Would you have done the that's same what I if, say when I said I never meant to? Okay. Would you have done the same for a 13-year-old boy? I don't know. Maybe I wouldn't have. Why not? Because it was a boy. Okay. And you're not attracted to boys. Right. Okay. So that sort of chips away at the I wanted to be a nice guy story. Yeah, because I was... Okay. So then I want you to continue and I want you to explain what turned you on about Kayla. After all of that, I want to be a nice guy. Don't ever give anyone your name. Stuff like that. Because we're still talking about the very first day. Tell me what turned you on about Kayla so that you turned on your camera and showed her your penis. You know, this is so hard for me to talk about. I understand. I understand that it's really hard for you. Because you know what it means. You know what it's saying about you. That I had bad intentions from the beginning. What were the bad intentions? To have sex with a 13-year-old girl. Okay. Jesus. So tell me what turned you on about that. It's just the thought of it, I guess. Okay. So what's the thought of it? Just the thought of it. What about the thought of it? is exciting to you. I don't know. I know it's really hard to talk about. I know that it is. And I think that, yeah. But this is, this is what Maria is talking about. You moving on. You have to get past this stuff. You have to get it out. I'm sure that it's been bothering you this whole time. I'm sure it was bothering you back then. You had these thoughts in the back of your mind. They were there. It wasn't, it didn't just all of a sudden happen that night. You had them. And that's such a burden. (sighs) 
because there's a there's a side of you that knows you know you know that you didn't you didn't want to be that guy so i want you to keep pushing you're you're a lot stronger than this to just stop yourself The thought of having sex with an underage girl that was a virgin. Okay. <sighs> and what was exciting about that for you? Just because she was an underage girl that was a virgin. So about it being an underage girl who's a virgin, what were the types of feelings that you were having about that when you would think about it? Like what was, what was something in particular that turned you on when you were thinking about this? When you were having your moments alone, what would you think about? Oh, oh God, that is fucking hard to talk about. I know. But like I said, it's it's going to be freeing for you. It's something that it has to happen, Lauren. I've never gone this in depth talking about it with anyone. Okay. Ugh. Well, I'm I'm glad that you're able to do that today. So I want you to take a deep breath, and I want you to keep going. What did you imagine when you're having these? fantasies when you're imagining yourself back then what did you fantasize about I know we we said a younger girl underage who was a virgin tell me about that uh, oh god Her being naked and me being naked with her and me trying to be gentle with her and what was that? Oh god, you didn't hear it. I didn't hear the the very last part. You said being gentle with her and then I think it might have cut out or something. What else did I'm you trying say? To be good and trying to be good for her. What do you mean good for her? mean being gentle with her. Okay. So you wanted to give her her first experience? Yeah. And what was exciting about that? I guess it just being her first experience. Do you think that that would make you an important part of her life? Maybe that was part of it. I, guess I wanted to show her that I cared like she was showing me that she cared. Okay. And what else attracted you to her? Her hair. What like the her blonde hair, you mean? Yeah. She's okay. like blonde. Okay. She was showing me. She was showing me that she cared about me, and that meant a lot to me at the time. Well, that that happened later. That happened later because you had about a month to talk to her before everything happened yeah. at the end. Yeah. So at first, we're still, it was just me being horny. You were horny, okay. And how did you feel when you found Kayla? That must have been really exciting for you. Oh, what do you mean? How do I feel when I found Kayla? Well, I mean, she's 13. She's exactly what you were looking for. No, that, that's that's where I got to start because she was not what I was looking for. I wasn't out looking for a 13 year old. I wasn't, I didn't, when I went in the chat room, I went in an adult mm -hmm. chat room. I right. didn't go in a teeny barber chat room. Right. I understand. I was, not that. Looking, I was not looking for that. Right. But you found her, though. So when yeah. you found her, how did you feel? Were you thinking like, oh, finally, 
this is my ultimate my ultimate fantasy that I can't tell anybody about. The stuff that I'm talking to you about, I've never gone in depth with anybody, including Emma or Winnie. Okay. With the stuff. What about like with Allie? Mm-hmm. With Allie, I've never got this in depth with Allie about it either. I've never been in depth, this in depth with it, with class mm-hmm. to go this deep into my thoughts. I can tell you that they probably already know your thoughts and they've been waiting to hear them. Well, they've heard some of them. They haven't heard this in depth. Mm-hmm. But that's what they're waiting for. I have a problem going this in depth because I hate thinking myself doing that. What I right. Do. It's like ripping off a Band-Aid. You just do it. Yeah. Yeah, like ripping off duct tape. Yeah, duct tape. But you just do it because it has to be done. It has to be done. And that's how you can get the help that you need. When you're talking to right. Ali or when you're talking to your class and when you were talking to Emma, you, you knew these things in the back of your mind. You knew that they were there. And it was way too scary for you to say them. And unfortunately, the flip side to that is that they're not able to then help you in the best way that they can. It's hard for me to deal with. It's hard for me to live mm-hmm. with. Mm-hmm. It's not the guy that I ever wanted to be. Right. And unfortunately, the internet gave you that ability to be that guy. Fucking mad at myself for doing that. When did you start getting mad at yourself? Right when I did it. What do you mean right when you did it? Right when Chris Hansen walked out. Okay. I was like, I was like fuck. Mm-hmm. What the fuck is going on? Well, at first I was, at first I was really nervous. I was like, well, who the fuck is this? I didn't know. I didn't know Chris Hansen. I'd never seen the show before. Well, yeah, but it was I an knew. adult, and you weren't expecting an adult. Yeah, well, that's what I thought was, was either her father or a cop. Mm-hmm. I didn't know who Chris Hansen was. I'd never seen him before in my life. That's fine. But like I said, it was an adult male walking yeah. out. He yeah. was obviously going to know why you were there. Yeah. So you were mad at yourself for getting caught. I was mad at myself for getting caught. I was mad at myself for going there to begin with. So I knew better. I even said that in the conversation. You know, what what did I you say? There, I could wind up going the I could wind up going to jail because of it. I said that earlier in the conversation. Okay. I knew better than to do it. And it's one of the reasons it's so hard for me to to think about me doing it because I knew better and I it's one of the, one of the reasons I didn't want to do it. But the chance that she was real was better. Yeah, it was no, a lot. I, it was a lot stronger because yeah. you can you couldn't pass up that opportunity. And it's sick. It's very sick. One of the reasons I don't understand how I could possibly do that is because what I went through when I was a kid. I knew how much it bothered me. I knew how hard it was to live with it. But that wasn't what you were thinking about when you were talking to her. No, it's not. So none of that stuff came up in your mind? No. It wasn't the pain that it could cause her or the sadness, the regret that she would have had after? Or the hurt, or the hurt that it would cause her. Especially because you were you were saying that you were in love with her and that you were going to get married. Yeah. Were you serious about that? No, I want to talk. I want to talk about marrying her right there. I I know. Well, well you I, couldn't because it would have that, been illegal. You could. You would have been found out if you tried to marry yeah. her right then. Yeah. When I said that, I mean when she was eighteen. That's what I meant when I said that. And actually, I think I said that in the conversation. Well, yeah, I mean, it wouldn't have been able to happen really before then. So in your mind, you were thinking, I'm going to have this relationship with her for five years. Yeah. Okay. 
I don't know why the hell I was thinking that. But I knew it, that that wouldn't work. I really hate myself for doing doing that. One of the things um, that I was thinking about that made me sad out of the millions of things that made me sad about this situation was that Kayla's first experience with a man, even just verbally, the things that he told her were going to turn out to be lies. She would have had to feel at 13 years old that a man will say whatever he thinks that she wants to hear in order to have sex with her. That's pretty sad. It's devastating. It's pretty selfish. It's extremely selfish. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I think that, in all honesty, the entire conversation was about you being horny. It wasn't about finding someone who cared about you or not wanting your money. It was all about your dick. And that's what it wound up being, because that's all I said. That's all that you said, and that's all that you mm-hmm. showed her. Like I said um, last time as well, I, I talked about this a lot with Winnie. And I read through the chat and, and so much of it is burned into my head. Once again, when you're talking about emotions and I found somebody, you know, who was paying attention to me and that's why I kept talking to her again, that that's a, a protection that you're using for yourself to differentiate yourself from the other predators. You never thought of it like that. It sucks that to live with. Like a piece of shit I was. Mhm. And that's not that's not an easy thing for people to get past. No, it is. It's not. I I, I can't get past that. I think well, every fucking day. I well, no, I'm talking it. about I'm talking about everyone else. Well, I know it, it's affected me my life a lot because people haven't gotten past it. I can't get past it. Every fucking day I think about it. What do you think about? I think I think about why it, why did I do it? Well, we already talked Not... about why you did it. We talked about why you did it. It's because you wanted to have <laughs> sex with a 13-year-old. That was your fantasy. How I can bring myself to do it is what I'm saying because I knew it was wrong. And it's not something that I didn't want to be that guy that did that kind of thing. I knew and then how much you... it would cause that person because I had to live with it myself. And I was so fucking disgusted by it. I know you don't want me to say this again, but I knew I did not want to go to the house. But I still went there. Why did you go there? Because the thought of having sex with an underage girl turned me on. Right. So the answer of I didn't want to go there doesn't apply. Yes, you're right. Because I didn't want to go there. I just didn't want to get caught. Right. That's where all the planning what came in. Fucking, what a fucking piece of shit. Yep. You were a predator. Yeah, as much as I hate fucking saying that. Well, you didn't say it. I did. No. You said it, but I know. I know. <laughs> fucked up. I think you should say it yourself. I was a predator. No sense me not saying it because everything I did says that I was. That's exactly it. Ashamed of it. So fucking ashamed of it. Disgusted by it. Ashamed of it. Grossed out by it. Hurt by it. So out of the two situations, the two possible situations that it could have been in that Kayla was a real 13-year-old girl that you had been exposing yourself to, (laughs) that you had been talking about molesting her and participating in her rape. There's the possibility that she was real. And then the other possibility is that she was a grown woman sitting behind a computer, wasting your time in the hopes that you're going to be talking to her and not running into another 13-year-old. I'm happy that I got caught. I'm happy it was a sting. I'm happy that I didn't get the chance to hurt anyone. And not only that, not only showing up, and I know that that's obviously a huge deal, but I've said it before and I'll say it again. 
the damage to Kayla started way before you drove up her driveway. I know. The damage to Kayla started when you asked her if she knew what rape was, when you established yourself as a safe person to talk to, when you were the exact opposite. Yeah, I know. These are the things that you have to verbalize. You have to say them out loud and you have to admit them. The damage that started to her was when I started talking sexually to her. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to deny and not say it because I know it. I know it. Yeah. It hurts like hell, but I'm the kind of guy. That's the guy who still needs help because he's never gotten away from you. He's been stuck there. You've been trying to suppress him. And he's not able to leave. That guy, I don't know how, I don't know how that guy's ever going to be up to wait because he thinks about it all the time. Well, I don't mean, has, uh, I don't mean leaving. He has a hard time letting, I have a hard time letting people in because of what I did. Yeah. And the opposite is going to be true as well. People are going to have a really hard time letting you in. Sorry, I'm a little shit. I think that you're exhausted because you've been in denial for so many years. It's hard to do. It's hard to talk about. I know. It is. The worst thing that you can do at this point, Lauren, now that you've started to talk about exactly what you were thinking that first night with Kayla, the worst thing that you can do is go backwards. I don't want to go backwards. I didn't, that, that's that's part of the reason me going over to Tony and the Wendy's because they don't they don't judge me. They just let me be me while I'm there. Are you sure about that? Well, as far as Tony, Tony doesn't judge me. Well, Tony. I- when he told me he that he actually laughs at you about getting arrested. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he did. But he, he tried teasing me about it until he realized that it, that it pissed me off. I had a lot of anger when I got out, and a lot of it was towards Tony, and Tony's actually the one that I took it out on. So I'd go over there, and, and we'd get drunk. I said things to him that I'd been wanting to say for years, and he knew I was right in saying everything, everything that I said. And we'd get to the point where we pushed each other around outside, pushed me on the ground, and pushed me off, so I got up and pushed him down, too. Come that motherfucker. Try to fucking push me again. Kind of surprised him because he didn't, didn't realize that. But I wound up pushing him on the ground, but we never hit each other. I think that a lot of your anger was displaced, like it was being placed in different, in different people, in different situations, because you didn't want to admit what you did and your actual responsibility in it as being 100%. Yeah, because nobody else drove me there. It was me that drove me there. It was me that put myself at the computer. Right. It was me that. The whole thing. So I know that there's stuff that has gone on since then on the computer about you. Yeah. And I don't know. I, I don't know everything, but it looks like there's a lot of stuff. And from what I gather, it all comes down to these excuses that you've had. <laughs> I mean, just scratching the surface, just looking at some of the comments that people have made. Um some of the posts and things like that, there's a lot of anger. And it goes with, like, how is this guy denying what he did? He's actually saying he didn't want to go there. He didn't want to talk to her like that. Is that is he seriously doing that? Like, what the fuck? And even on your channel, your own videos were 100% denial. I know. And that's why you've been trolled so hard. That, that's why stuff has happened. It seems to me the response from, from other people has been completely negative because you're in denial and everybody knows better. Everybody knows better. 
I didn't want to. I didn't want to admit it to myself. I didn't want to think of myself that way. I know. I knew I didn't. I knew I didn't want to think of myself that way. I was ashamed I of myself. Yeah, and that makes perfect sense. And so when they're getting these responses and these videos about how well, I'm going to tell you why I went there. And it all comes down to my family and how they treated me. And I was like, wait a minute. I thought this was going to be about how he ended up there. And now he's talking about other people and how everything else seems to boil down to other people did things to me and pushed me in a direction where I ended up taking my dick out for a girl and I drove to her house and wanted to fuck her. And that is so frustrating so frustrating yeah i know so think about it when when i talked to you last time you were talking about he committed a crime against a poor 12 year old girl and his excuse was i was drunk and i blacked out and so um it happened and uh, i'm gonna move on with my life now you did not accept that reason you were thinking to yourself being drunk is no excuse for what you did. Yeah. And that's what everyone has been hearing from you. Yeah, I know. Because I didn't want to admit it. And now you have. I hate myself for it. I don't want to hate myself. It's so hard to live with it knowing what I did. Mm -hmm. And now what you're going to be um, able to do is use the resources that you have available to make yourself better to keep going deeper and to keep getting an understanding and not backslide because there's there's going to be a lot of people Lauren who are never ever going to forgive you ever those could be people who don't know you at all though and they can also be people that are in your own family and people who are your friends it's just going to be a part of of the consequence and they're not a bunch of assholes they're not a bunch of people, you know, can't move on with their lives. Nothing like that. It's just, that's the way that it's going to be. It might take some time before I'm able to talk to anybody else about it besides you. As deep as what I've gone with you. Well, that's okay. I mean, if, that, if that's the case for right now, that's okay. I'm hoping that you're going to be able to branch out from there. I'm hoping that you can talk to other people including your probation officer and your class, especially. <sighs> the denial that you've had for all of this time is why you have become so hated. No one can subtract what happened on that day or on that month. No one can take it away because it already happened. But then after that, you went to prison and nothing <laughs> ever, nothing ever changed. The only response that, that people were getting from you is no, 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 it wasn't me, wasn't me, wasn't me. Not my fault. You need to look elsewhere. You need to look at the shit bags that are in my family instead. Look at what they did to me. I'm the victim. <clears throat> and that's just not the way it is. So don't do that to yourself anymore. And the one thing is, like, you're not holding this big secret of your admission. Everybody already knows. It's just that no one's ever heard it from you. It's kind of like when we were talking about your money. Just because people aren't outright calling you an asshole and a fucking deadbeat doesn't mean that that's not what they're thinking. And that's not what they're telling their friends and their family. You've said before that you want to be a good man. Yeah, I do. You don't want people to walk around and look at you sideways like, oh, my God, that's fucking guy. No, I don't. I think it's part of what hurts me so bad. It's because I know, I know what I did. Mm -hmm. It's so hard for me to live with it. That's why I just don't. I don't, I don't even I don't understand why you would like. I can't even like myself for what I did. Well, I hate you for what you did. And you should. Yeah. I hate myself for what I did. I know a lot of victims, Lauren. A lot. 
it's devastating to think about their pain and how they've been changed from that moment on. Someone that I know has been living with it for over 50 years and there are scars on her body from how she would cut herself because that's how she would deal with it. She had so much pain. It, it affected everything in her life. She never had a normal relationship with a man. She never did. And it's all because someone like you came along. That's what breaks my heart. I want you to really feel that, Lauren. I want you to feel that it's because of people like you. I do feel it. I know, I know what you're saying. I know how they feel. That's what makes it so hard for me to live with what I did. One of the things that makes me so sad is that you said you got mad at yourself when Chris Hansen came out. Because you got caught. Yeah, it was because I got caught. That's fucked. Yeah, I know. That's fucked up, Lauren. I know what it is. That's something that you really need to think about. Because... I'm happy now that I got caught. I I could have hurt her. Yeah. For life. For life. I know what happened to me. And it hurt me for life. Right. You would have destroyed her. Your intention to do what you did was to destroy her. Because you were horny. I was selfish. You were selfish. And all you thought about was your dick. It's fucking pathetic. It's sick. It's fucked up. Every disgusting word that you can possibly think of, that's what it is. That is why sexual predators like you are at the bottom of the barrel. Nobody gives a fuck. That's why you were probably in protective custody. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. In jail. In prison, I was in general population. Okay. Were you ever in protective custody in prison? No. What type of what type of a, a cell block were you in? Were you in with people like you? No. So some, you were in had, with people who some were had like... Some, some, had some, some had similar charges. Others had murder charges. Okay. Others had drug charges. It was general okay. population. Okay. Well, the reason why you were in protective custody when you were in jail is because you could have been killed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anybody in jail could have been killed... It- well, no, in particular, someone like you. Yeah. I'm thinking about the possibility of you totally changing your story and going back to how it was before. What? Going back into yeah. denial. I'm not going to go back into denial. You're going to be the only one that I get this in depth with the result for a while. Well, hopefully it can be with the, with the professional good. people in your life, the people that can actually help you process a lot of this stuff. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not someone who's been trained to deal with someone like you at all. But you're the one that I choose to be opening up to first about all this, that I trust to talk to about all this. Even okay. though, even though I know, I know I can talk to Emma about it, but it's still not yeah. the same because it's it's just not the same. Why wouldn't it be the same? Because it's not. It's, it's not you. Well, no, I know it's not me, but she's your best friend. Yeah, but it's still just not the same. And I don't trust me. I mean, I. I probably do trust them with my bank account information, but not to the point where I actually give it to her. Does that make sense? Not really. As much information, with as much information as, I get, as I've given you about me, uh, I don't really trust anybody that much to give that much information about me. It's not one thing about me that I won't tell you. Okay. Well, Emma... Um... She's, she actually knows about this stuff. 
I know. In that's, between that's Winnie why... calling her a Mexican and a wetback, she she tells yeah, me she that really she's really person. smart. Yeah. So I don't even, I don't think of her as a Mexican because she, to me she's just Emma. That's nice. And, and, and I'm not I'm not prejudiced anyway, so well, that's good. Doesn't matter if she's Mexican too or not, but right. But it's still not something I'm ready to to get this in depth from Emma about. Okay. If you want. With the only one I want to be this in depth with it, about any of it right now. I mean, hopefully there there does come a time when you'll want to, or you'll want to talk to someone, you know, the someone in. Is... And if that ha, I mean, I can be, I can be on the phone with you, when that happens. I don't need to say anything. I can just be there. I love that. Okay, so whenever that time comes, you want to talk to Emma. I know Dan. Dan's a good guy. I might skip over Winnie for the time being. <laughs> there's, I, know, I just think there's still more that I need to figure out, too. What do you need to figure out? I don't know. I guess... What, well, Sadie? Speak a girl. I guess just... I don't know. It bothers me so bad that I did it. But what do you need to figure out? How I can bring myself to do it. What do you think you're going to find, you know, at the end of that road, you're going down this road of, of trying to figure out how you could do it. What do you think you're going to find there? What are you expecting? I, I don't know. I'm not expecting anything. I just <clears throat> trying to figure it out after to what happened to me and how it affected me. How could I bring myself to do it? What the hell was wrong with my head? Let myself do it. Well, I'm going to ask something of you, and I'm hoping that you can continue to be honest. And I'm going to ask you, when did the fantasy start about you being with someone who's young, underage, and a virgin? Then that uh, when I started talking to her that way, that's when that fantasy started. Do you think that you had been denying that fantasy for a while, and the opportunity presented itself? and more of a safe way, and that's why you're able to engage in it? Maybe. Okay, so let's let's figure that out. When did you start thinking about that? Something I have to think about, because I don't, I don't know right off, right off the bat. But it was before that night. That's what I don't know. I can't remember, can't remember ever thinking like that. Or maybe I have thought about it before when I heard about it. People doing them. What did you hear about? On the news, people doing it, or stories of people told me about people doing it. Maybe that's when it's. Maybe that's when thought started about it. So you would hear maybe something similar: an older man yeah. being with a young girl who was a virgin, and even though that story was on the news, because obviously. Most likely he got caught after the fact, after something terrible happened. But that turned you on. As much as I hate to admit it, I probably, I probably did. That's when thoughts started about it. Cause I don't remember when exactly, but I know I've heard stories about it before. And that's every time somewhere along the way, that's when a thought about it came into my head. But I never acted on it. And then I, I never... It was not, I, I never stopped and thought about it all the time like that. I don't really, that's what, maybe that's why I don't remember thinking about it. Somewhere along the way, the thought was in my head. It's not something I ever dreamed about. Did you ever think about it when you would masturbate? No. Why not? Because all I thought about was, older, was women my age. So when you would hear the stories, like on the news or something? It would turn you on. Evidently. Some more along the way, it must have. The day that I turned 37 was the day I tried to play on it. Well, actually, it was a month before that, but I started trying to play on it. What about any any other people online? Because you've been online for a while, right? That wasn't, you didn't just start when you went to Nashville. No, I was online for a while. Okay. So... Had you ever come across someone who was young like that? No. I mean, I know you weren't going into 
teenage chat rooms and stuff and stuff. You were going into adult chat rooms, but obviously we know that there's nothing really stopping anyone from going in there. They can, they can do whatever they want. Yeah. But I never, well, the ones that I talked to, one, one was Amanda James, which her actual name was Leslie Miller. Even just she casually. Because I'm not talking about like long relationships and things like that. I'm just casually. Even just casually, I don't I never, I never talked to anybody that wasn't you know, young like that. So I'm curious about something because I know that with perverted justice, they had their decoys and they were positioning themselves in these chat rooms to see what would happen, to see if they were approached. And there were a couple of them that were there. It wasn't just Kayla. But when you were reaching out to them, after a couple of lines, they bailed because you were already talking to Kayla. See, they, they say that, and I don't, I, I've heard about them saying that before, and I don't mm-hmm. remember talking to anyone else. Yeah, I mean, I can understand you not remembering because it was so brief. You know, it was kind of like you would, you would go to them and, <laughs> and it wouldn't go anywhere. It would only just be a couple lines and then they wouldn't respond anymore. I, I remember, I remember there was one room that I was in. It was an adult room. Okay. And I remember that I went down the name of every, every girl and just said hello to every girl in that room. Just, just something, just for something to do. You know, I didn't mean to talk to anybody and have a conversation with anybody. I just, Every, every female in that room, I went down and said hello to every one of them. I remember that one room that I, did that, that I did that in. Okay. And I'm assuming that that's the one where you came across Kayla, because that's the story that you've used since then. I don't, I don't remember. I don't remember if that was the same room or not. Okay. I just, I just would click on the names and... and I say hello, and I click off the names, and I go to the next one, and I do the same thing. Just hoping that somebody would answer. No, I just. Well, then, what would be the that, point you know, of saying hi? I I don't know why I did that. Again, <laughs> I don't know why is is really stupid. Well, <laughs> it might be stupid, but it's just I did it. I, I didn't really need to have a conversation with anyone. It's just down through every female name and said hi. But did they have little pictures next board, to their names or something? How how would you know? No. It was, how would I know if it was did female you, or not? I'd know, I think yeah. I'd look on, look on their profile and it would say female. Okay. And then they, and it would have a picture in there though, right? Well, some of them had pictures and some didn't. Okay. But do I remember any of the pictures? No. Well, not I, I understand that. Do you remember Kayla's uh-huh. picture? On a profile? No. I remember the pictures that she sent me. Okay. Or some of them. I remember some of them. And even at the even at the time when she sent me the pictures, I don't know why I couldn't see it at the time, probably because I didn't want to. But I, I knew they were different girls. There was there was at least two different girls that weren't the same. Did you think that maybe she's so young that she's going to look different, depending on when I, the pictures were taken? I don't remember what I thought of. I, I, no, I don't. I don't think I thought that. It just because I could tell that they weren't the same girl. And what did you think when you noticed that? I, I thought something was messed up because it's not the same girl. But what did you off. What did you think was messed up about it? That she was telling me if she was the same girl and it wasn't, I could see that it wasn't the same girl. Okay. And that's what's messed up about it. I didn't say anything to her. I didn't, I didn't let it click in my head that, you know, this is messed up because she showed me two different pictures. That's not the same person. What about when you called her on the phone? 
that messed me up too. Because she didn't tell me that she was thirteen. She sounded like she was nine. Yeah. And that messed me up. It didn't sound like it messed you up. No, it didn't sound like it did, but Because that was before phone, Chris Hansen came out. When I got off the phone it it, it messed me up because I was like that didn't sound like a thirteen year old girl. And when I got there and, and Casey was there and her hair was brown and that, that messed me up. And like everything clicked that nothing was the same but nothing was clicking to tell me. So then when you were talking to Kayla, I I don't remember exactly her name, but it was something like Kayla princess, right? It was something like super girly, like young. Yeah. So when you saw that name, you imagined that she was a young girl. I don't know what I, what I imagined when I saw her name. I don't okay. remember what I saw. What about when you saw her pictures? When I saw her... What are you asking me, though? I'm asking you, like, what made you want to continue? I don't... I won't tell you that I know, but I don't. Other than the fact that I was horny. And the thought of the whole thing. Mm-hmm. That's what made you want to continue. One of the things I think is interesting, too, is that when you were talking to her on the phone, so there's a couple of things. You see her name. It's obviously a kid's name. You say hi to her. How old is she? She says she's 13. Eventually, you talk to her on the phone She sounds like a little baby. Literally. I know. Nothing deterred you. There was nothing that made it real. Or or I should say too real for you. That you were like, oh my God, I'm so disgusted with myself. This is too much. I am out. I can't even believe. I can't believe I'm doing this. So. Do you understand why there's more for me to figure out? Well, there's more for you to admit. The answers are there. We've already been through some of them. You're just burying them because you don't want to say it. You pull out your security blanket that says, I didn't want to go. I never even meant to do it. I've never had those types of thoughts before. I'm not attracted to young girls like that. I'm not that guy. My family and friends know me. They know I would never hurt a child. I've always loved kids. All of those things come out because the question of why you did it and how could you do it are way too difficult for you to answer. There's absolutely nothing to figure out, Lauren. You already know. I did it because I was horny and, and the thought of it. Right. And the thought of it did not just pop out that day when you saw her. It didn't just materialize that day. You've been fantasizing about this for a long time. And finally, it became safe for you to push it further. To actually say the words to her. But I've never masturbated to it. I've never sat there and uh, like at the day. All the fucking crap that I said to her. I've never sat there and thought about this stuff like that. I've never sat there and had big fantasies of of having sex with an underage girl. I've I've never gone to that depth till that day. If you didn't masturbate to it, if you didn't, you know, think about the things that made it having sex with an underage girl exciting for you. If you never thought about it before that day, why did it all of a sudden hit you?
by other people that of other people doing this. So I've, so I've thought about it before the day, but I've never sat down and dwelled on it and, and thought about it. And, and do, you, do you understand what I'm saying? I've never taken time to, to dream about it. To just sit there and, and think about what it would, what it would be like and, and not to put that much thought into it. Well, when you say that, I can imagine that you wouldn't necessarily think of like every single detail, like where you would be, what her name would be, that, you know, that type of thing. But I think that there's, there's things that, that you were thinking about because. Okay. This is another way for me to explain it. Like, like okay. with you, I, mm-hmm. I, I think about doing things with you. Just, just doing things. I, I think about just going out to eat with you and just doing things with you. I think about it all the time. I never did that. The sit there and fantasize about having sex with an underage girl like that. But what would I'm you never think taking about that much that? time out of my day to think about that? But what would you think about then? What would happen? Okay, so you're you're sitting at home. You hear a story on the news about a child who was molested, and something turns you on about that. What happens then? There's just a thought in my head of it because of being mentioned on the news and the thought of it, and I and I try, try to think about it. You know, actually happening. Okay, so when you think about it actually happening, what's happening? It just what you know, to try to picture it in my head. What would you try to picture? Just what that, what that was uh, actually have was that was happening. You know what they say, what the stories that they say. They, they, you know, just the. I try to get the picture in my head of, of it actually happening. Okay. And and, and that's the thing is that I never put myself in place to be in that in that picture with that girl or that boy because I've heard disgusting fucking stories about it happening to boys mm-hmm. and that just wrote me right the fuck out because of what happened to me. Mm-hmm. And so it's not something that I ever sat down and thought constantly about. It's just a story of it. When the story of it, I hear the story of it, it would it would be in my head, and I would try to I try to picture it. And, and it turned you on. Maybe only somewhere along the way it did. Well, when you say evidently it did, that that kind of puts a question mark in there, you know? Yeah, because it grosses me out to think about it. Right. But that's what we're... It it grosses me out that that it turned me on. Right. So there is no question mark. So change your answer a little bit and not say evidently it turned me on. Because when you say that, it makes... As if you're confused and you still don't understand. The answer really is, it turned me on. When I would hear those stories, I would visualize myself in those stories. I say I'm done because it's a defense thing. I don't want to, don't want to admit it. Right, it's a defense thing, and that's what we're trying to get past. <clears throat> that's what's been blocking you this whole time. All these defenses that you're putting up there, when you already know the answer. But I hate the answer. I know you hate the answer. But that answer is part of you.
And I get that you can't take it. You can't take the discomfort. You know, I wonder if what happened to me when I was a kid, if that's the reason I, that I had thought about it. Well, I think that that's something in particular that maybe Emma can help you about, um, talk about, or that's something that... <laughs> It's something that you can talk about with your counselor and your and your probation officer. What I really want to do right now is for you to move past those defenses that you try. When you don't acknowledge this, you're never, ever, ever going to be able to process it the right way. That's why you've never been able to talk like this to Allie, someone who was in the position to help you. Fucking hurts the fucking thing back to when I was a kid. That I mean, so fucking mad about that. Mhm. I'm really glad that finally, finally, Lauren, you're saying it out loud. I'm glad that finally you're able to know that you're not any better than the other guys in your class, any other any of the other guys who were showing up to meet their own Kalas. You're not any better and you're not any different. It really sucks to have to sit in there and listen to some things that they've done. So I wanted to ask you this, and it's probably going to sound upsetting to you, but I want you to keep with being honest and open. When you are hearing those stories, do you get turned on? No, we don't. I get mad, I get irritated, and I try to block it out. Why do you get mad? Because he was a missing little kid. I've heard some disgusting things. Do you feel that things have changed for you since back when you were hearing the stories about men molesting children when it did turn you on and you would visualize those circumstances? So I think we need to do Until I now. Huh? What do you mean? What do I think things have changed for me? Well, what do you think has changed? Because... I get that they're they're talking in much more graphic detail and um, and things like that, but essentially it's the same situation as you hearing about a child in a sexual position. Yeah, yeah it, it's changed for me a lot. 
what's changed. I have a hard time sitting there listening to it. So the stories that I uh, that I'm hearing these people that they that they've done. I have a okay. really hard time sitting there listening to them. Sometimes I I just want to get up and punch them. Do you think that you're better than them? Do I think I'm better than them? Yeah, or different. I don't think I'm better than them. The reason I say that is because they just have more of a problem. Wow. Some of them can't stay away from that. It's well, how how are your thoughts and behaviors different from them? So I can stay away from it. I stay away from it. I don't think about it. You know, I, I hate, I hate the thought of it. I hate that I did it. I hate the thought of a kid being hurt. That's why it's so hard to sit there and listen to the stories. But I can't hate that person because he's got a sickness. And at least he's in there trying to deal with it and trying to get better to not do it. And some of them are really putting in a really good effort. Do you and, feel and some of like the ones that are putting in a really good effort are, are really have a serious, serious problem with it? Okay. So, what do you think about the sickness that brought you to do what you did? Well, I think is thank God I don't have as bad as what some of these other people have it. Okay. Some of these other people, some of these other people, it's like a drug to them. Mhm. I thank God all gone that I'm not in the position that they're in. So the position that they're in is different because they have at least one real victim. Well, the position is that they're in is that they, they're addicted to it. They won't stop, but they can they have a problem with stopping. What are they having a problem stopping? It's their thoughts. Okay. Their thoughts of how, how they want to do it again and then do it. And the thoughts of how it, it excites them to think about what they did. Mm-hmm. It doesn't excite me to think of what I did. It bothers me that I did what I did. It bothers me that I had thoughts of it. It bothers me that I acted on it. It bothers me to talk about it. It bothers me that I haven't been able to talk about it to anybody and go in depth with it like I have to deal with it. It bothers me that it eats me alive. It should eat you alive. As soon as you... As soon as you become... accepting or you've reached total acceptance of what you've done... That's just it. You're accepting it. It's 
hard for yourself, so. I hate thinking about it. I know. I hate thinking that I did it. And it hurts thinking that I did it. One of the things, the reason why I was bringing up um, the other couple of decoys that you hit up without remembering is that there would have been more Kayla's. And I'm not saying that their responses would have been the same. Your conversation may not have been exactly the same. It started the same. Because I can tell you (laughs) that one of the very first lines in common was, you're a little cutie. Yeah. This is what a piece of shit I was. Yeah. Maybe I don't remember it because I don't want to remember it. Well, again, like I said, you know, you may not remember exactly the names of the girls, but they sounded like little girls. There was one Disney girl. I mean, how how juvenile is that? I've I've heard of that. Okay. I've heard of that. I've heard other people tell me about that. Okay. I don't remember. I don't remember talking to any Disney girl. I don't remember any of the names. Yeah, because you were remember. kind of in a frenzy. Huh? You were kind of in a frenzy. And if she was a real girl, she would have remembered you every single day. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I've even heard girls who were young at the time that this happened or the time when internet chatting kind of started. Remember the times when they would be online, when they were around Kayla's age or whatever, and they would get these creepy, disgusting guys who would be doing exactly what you were doing. So- I get get all pissed off. I let let Leanne man to go on the internet when I was out in Washington State. Leanne was 12 years old. Okay. And I was sitting right there, and, and I let her go into a chat room, and then and I told her only talk, only talk to females. Pick out, pick out a female and see if she'll talk to you. Well, some guy got on there and started saying sexual shit to Leanne. Mhm. And I was fucking pissed. A guy like you. Yeah. Yeah. I get on there, and I, I get Leanne and Leanne out of the gym, and I get on there, and I start off the back to the, to the guy, and I so fucking pissed off. Fucking cocksucker. You were a cocksucker. I was a cocksucker, too. That's part of the reason why I don't understand how I can allow myself to do that. Well, once again, it was a fantasy of yours, and you were in a safe place to do it. Just like that guy was in a safe place to do it with your niece. Yeah, because you know I couldn't get my fucking hands on him. It's really ironic okay. that you were feeling that way, isn't it? Yeah. So this day I still remember how fucking pissed off I was. Piece of shit just kept running his fucking mouth.
I think that's um, probably why. When we didn't start crying. Why did crying she start exactly. crying? Because she saw how mad I was. I scared her and she, she started crying. She asked me to get off, get off the internet. And just shut the computer down, so I did. I saw her crying and I did what she asked me to do. Is that the niece that you were talking about? The niece that I was talking about. Yeah, you said that Kayla could trust you because you had nieces her age. Yeah, Leanne and Leanne didn't. You know, I've only got three nieces, and they're all, they're all the same age. Okay. So I'm curious why they were brought up. Because at the time... I really did not intend to do what I what I wound up doing. I really intended to just give her somebody to talk to. Well, that was okay. At the well, beginning go, of the conversation. Right. It was only it was only a couple of minutes in the conversation, and you brought them up. Yeah, and this is part of what messed me up. Is that, that this is why I don't. This is why it's hard for me to to get past what I did. It was only not long after that I started I started talking sexually to her, and it it bothers me. It bothers me because I can't figure it out. Well, we already figured it out. Well, I know, but I can I can't figure out. Why I did what I did you can't when, they, when I got so pissed it. off about somebody else doing it to Leanne. You can't and when I when I started it. out. But when I started out, it's not what I wanted to do. I can't figure out why I did it. Well, I, I know why I can. I, I figure out why I did it. I can't figure out how I allowed myself to do it. Okay, so say it again then. Or maybe it just bothers what me so What was the reason... For why you did it? Because of the thought of it. The thought of what? Of having, the thought of having sex with an underage girl. That was a virgin. And it made me horny. Right. And that pisses me off. Okay. This is what I mean when I say that you already know the answers to the questions. This is why I say I hope that you don't backslide into the same robotic responses. Yeah, but I'm going back to it again. It's the same same thing. But you're going back to the same answers because you don't want to say it. That's why... You're still in the class because you have yet to say it. There is something really wrong about getting turned on by a girl getting molested. Yeah, there is. And I hate myself for it. Okay, I understand. I understand that there's something in you that turns you on about that. Well, it it doesn't turn me on anymore. Okay, you need to tone it down because you're getting defensive. I know. I'm sorry. Okay. It doesn't turn me on anymore. I, I don't like thinking about it. I hate the thought of it. Whenever I see an underage girl, I, I go the other way. I literally go the other way so I can avoid even being near them. And, and it's sad. Why are you avoiding? Because it just scares the fuck out of me. Why does it scare you? Um, because of what I went through. 
doesn't scare me that I try it again. It scares me that, you know, for me to even be near them. It, just because of what I went through. I just try to avoid any contact with them because I don't want to be accused of anything. I, I don't want anything to do with it. Because you're afraid of how you're going to feel. No. That's what I'm saying. That's what I was trying to get you away from thinking. Well, the thing... That's not the reason. I don't want to be accused of anything. Here's the reason... Here's the reason why I'm I'm going to say what I what I'm going to say. You can't help what's going on in your head. Okay, now oh, I sorry, kept talking. That. I kept talking. <laughs> yeah. <You're dead. laughs> no, that's okay. That's okay. Um, the reason okay. why, because I know what I was going to say, so I'll just continue. Um, you can't help what goes on in your head. There are a lot of responses that are automatic. You obviously hate yourself for the attraction that you have. I don't think that it goes away. I think you're scared. I think you're scared of it. Yeah, I, I knew that's where you were going to go with that. And that's why I was trying to get you away from going there because that's not the reason. So I'm not attracted to them. I'm, I'm scared of being accused because I have this charge. Mm-hmm. That's okay. what I'm scared of. I'm not attracted to underage girls anymore. It, it's what I've gone through has scared the scared the fuck out of me. So I literally do not want to be near them. So you're saying that Chris Hansen was like shock treatment? Yeah. I'm saying like the whole thing was shock treatment. The whole five years. And the whole time after that. This, this doesn't go away for me. It's every day. Me beating myself up, as well as getting beat up on the internet. As well as spending five years incarcerated. To go back to something that I mentioned earlier, there's there's going to be people who are never, ever going to forgive you for what you did. They don't care what your reasons are. They don't care what your story is. They don't care. They're just going to hate you. Period. There are also other people who are going to not forgive you and they're not going to forget, but they're going to say, you know what? At least he's admitting what he did. At least he's being honest about what he did. So I'm just going to let it go now. See, Maria tells me that that, that why do I care what other people think? And it's like, well, I care. Mm-hmm. I've always cared what other people think. Mm-hmm. And I can't just let it go. Because it's neither thinking of all. And I hate people thinking bad of me. I've always hated them. Well, at this point, there are a lot of people who think the worst of you. I know. And it sucks. It sucks to live with it. Like I said, there's there's people who aren't, who aren't going to care what you have to say. And then there's others who just would love to hear the honest truth. There was a lot of, obviously everyone who appeared on that show is a scumbag. Everyone. There's one guy. I don't know if you remember him. He went, his screen name was bald beaver hunter. Yeah. I remember him. He was a little, little guy. John. Oh, John Wesley yeah. Elliott. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, he, he was in one of the prisons that I was in. Oh, for was a short he? Time. Yeah, okay. for a short time. Okay. And actually, he was, in, he was in, in the same jail cell, same pod 
that I was in for a short time. Okay. He was talking to Chris, who he thought was a therapist. And when he went, he was arrested. He went to his interrogation when he was talking to the police. (laughs) And he also thought the detective was a therapist, too. He felt like that's what he needed. And he was saying things that were disgusting, saying things that he wanted to have oral sex with a girl. That's why he was there. That's what his fantasy was. That's what turned him on. He was sharing photos of 11 and 12 year old girls. Well, you're saying like he's disgusting. You're the same guy. No, I, didn't, I never shared photos. I never had any photos except for the one that perverted just sent to me. And I deleted that off my computer. Well, I deleted it off what I thought was my computer. But I've been only saving cookies or shit that I don't know anything about. Emma explained it to me. Oh, okay. About the picture. But, you know, having having child pornography, that's just a... That's just another nail in the coffin. Well, I know. Whether it being there or not, does it make things any better for you? It, 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 was, a, it was a file that was sent to me from somebody from Perverted Justice. And at the time, not, not giving any thought of what it was, because I'd, you know, I'd never had anything like that sent to me before. How would you know uh, it was someone from Perverted Justice? Well, because it it took me a while to figure it out. But I figured it out that it was a file that was sent to me from someone from Perverted Justice. So what? It was, child, how, pornog- it was, it was child pornography. And it was, it was fucking disgusting. So how, but how do you know, I'm trying to figure out, how did you know it was Perverted Justice that did it? Because it was, it was the same time that I was talking to Kayla. Well, you were talking to other people too. Yeah, but at the time I was only talking to Kayla. I, didn't, I would talk to somebody else, but I don't remember who it was I was talking to. And actually, I don't know if I was even talking to them. I'm trying to remember, and I can't. I can't remember. Fuck, where the fuck I can remember it? I can't remember if I talked to them or not. I don't think it doesn't seem like I talked to them. Okay. It's, it seems like. It seems like somebody just sent the file to me and said, here, look at this. And at the time, I had never had child pornography sent to me, so I, it was no, it wasn't even in my mind. And I, I clicked it on to see what it was. And when it popped up, it was child pornography. And I fucking deleted it. I, can't, I, I don't know if I was talking to him or not. I just, I, I don't remember. Why did you delete it? Because it was child pornography. It was gross. You were, you were afraid of it. I, I was afraid of it. It was, it was disgusting. Well, I mean, it, but it's no different than what you were thinking about. And it was no different was, than what you were doing, you were going to do with Kayla. But it was different because I was seeing it. Maybe that's why none of it felt real to me. And that's why I have a hard time admitting it, because I, because I see that picture and I was grossed out by it, and it bothers me and to this day. It's still burning my fucking head. Well, I think that that you can take, you can take the idea of Kayla not being real in your mind, and take it off the table. Yeah, that's it's another one of your real. defenses. Me, Kayla, I was, I was trying to make it real. Right, Kayla was real. So mad at myself for fucking doing such a stupid thing. Such a selfish, pathetic, disgusting thing. Well, you said it before. It turned you on. It don't, don't turn me on anymore. It grosses me out. It bothers me. It bothers me that I did it. That's why I have a hard time talking to people about it. I don't want to admit that I did it. You know I did. There has to be a better way for you to go about things when you don't want to talk about it instead of denial. 
and defensiveness. And most importantly, deflection and alcohol going after people that are involved directly with what you're upset about. It's just, you're mad at them for something else and you're upset at the time. So then you, you start pointing fingers. I don't even think it's them that I'm mad at. I think it's me. It should be you. You're the only one who has control over your actions, but you've made it your point to make it about other people. You wanted to sue NBC for millions of dollars for nothing. Yeah, I know. You told Winnie that everyone was against you. Your attorney didn't do shit for you. If they had, then you would have gone to trial and you would have been exonerated and gone on with the rest of your life. <laughs> but the reality is, Lauren, you were fucked. You had no defense. What the fuck was your defense going to be? I don't know. Well, tell me what your what, defense was. You know what, I don't know. What, well, I'm not going to say I don't know. I don't remember. That's so when you so were... Much, I think the whole time it was just because I was so mad at myself for doing it. So I was taking it out on other people. You were trying to make it not your fault. That's what you were doing. Yeah. That's exactly what I was doing. Because like you said earlier, you didn't get upset with yourself until Chris Hansen walked around the corner. That's when you were like, oh, motherfucker, I'm screwed. Yeah. It wasn't any of the time before then. All of the violations against Kayla. None of that was upsetting to you. I know. Pretty fucking sad. It's not sad. It's disgusting. It's infuriating. It's sad that I would be so selfish. It's not so sad. Heartless, so heartless. Take out the sad. It's not it's sad. Di- it's disgusting that I would be so selfish and thoughtless and heartless and gross. And to think all of those things only after you were caught. Is that disturbing to you? It's very disturbing to me. I hate it. I think about well, I could have hurt someone like that. Well, and and how that yeah. wasn't even your first thought. Your first thought is yeah. I'm gonna go to prison. Yeah. It no. wasn't the fact that you were jerking off on your camera for a kid. Yeah, I know. That you were asking her to masturbate for you. What do you think there for the rest of my life? The younger kids. The younger husband. The younger parents. If she was able to have a husband. If she was able to have kids. If she was able to have a normal, healthy relationship with anyone. Which is questionable. Yeah, it's very questionable. The reason why it's it's difficult for me to process the idea that Kayla was the first one you ever talked to was because you had everything figured out. What do you mean I had everything figured out? Well... You had your plans, and even before then, trying to work around her parents, saying uh, that. Uh, okay, now, well, I, I know. I, yeah, but I know what you're saying. And then, what am I saying? That, that I must have thought about it for a while before I started talking to Kayla. Not even just. Must have just, been in my, been in my just, mind before that. Yes. And you said that it was, so you're not going to backpedal now. No, no, no I'm not backing out because I already told you that, that I had to have thought about I, that, that I did think about it because when it was mentioned to me before, when I hear stories about it, 
yeah, I thought about it before, but I never, I never made plans of of what to do and how to do it. And, that, and that's what I was trying to say. I've never sat there and dwelled on this stuff and put actual thought into it. Well, even before the, the plan of getting into your truck and driving and, and all that stuff, I'm talking about working out how you could continue talking to her without getting caught. I can give you an example. Make sure you turn my cam off if you leave because I don't want your parents to walk in the room. Joking yeah. about how she can't tell anybody about her boyfriend who is going to be 37 years old and how she should ask her dad for a lock on the door because she's getting older now and she needs her privacy, a.k.a. Lauren wants to jerk off. Make sure you call one of your other friends so that my number is not the last one. Because God forbid her parents just get curious one day, pick up the phone. Who was the last number that was called? Ring, ring. Talking about how she was going to come to your house instead. That would have been a lot safer. Because you were probably really nervous about being in hers. Do you remember what she was going to have to do after she pet Bud for five minutes? No. I don't. You sure about that? I'm sure I don't want to remember. Maybe I'm shutting it out on purpose. Don't shut it out. Okay, so ask me. Ask me the question again. Okay. What did she have to do after playing with Bud for only five minutes? What was going to happen next? I was going to take her in the bedroom and have sex with her, right? Not exactly. You didn't have a bed. Oh, the air mattress. I really don't she was going to have to. She was going to take off her clothes. That's when she was going to get naked. And before then, before you even got to your apartment, you guys were going to be in your truck. And you were going to wear some easy access clothes like the loose shorts that you had on. So she could blow you or jerk you off while you're driving. That's what I mean when I say that. The abuse of Kayla started the moment you asked her if she knew what rape was and if anyone made her say wow when she was in the chat room. That's when it started. You've even said that you lost sight of her being 13. But yet... That's all you referenced during the entire time. Whether it was yeah, the constant presence of her parents, the fact that she hadn't really gone through puberty. She didn't really, she didn't know how to masturbate. <laughs> and you even said, Lauren, and I'm going to refresh your memory because you seem to want to block it out. When she said she didn't actually stick her finger inside you were happy because you wanted your finger to be the first one. Okay, but I'm going to ask you, why are you recapping the whole thing for me? Because you need to hear it. You need to acknowledge it because you've been denying it this whole time. I'm not denying that I said that stuff. So when you, when you tell me about things that I said, I remember saying it. Well, you just said before, when I asked you what she had to do after she pet Bud for five minutes, at first you said, I don't know. And then you said, well, because maybe I'm remember. blocking it out. Because I probably am blocking it out. I don't want to remember the things I said. You have to. That's why I'm pointing them out to you. You have to know what you said, because then you can finally move forward. You can get past all this stupid fucking shit that you've been saying all of these goddamn years. All this stuff that makes people just roll their fucking eyes. And it's out there because he made a video about it. You can't take back the things that I said. You can't. I wish to Christ I could. 
Mm-hmm. I don't want to remember the things that I said. I don't want to be that guy. But you were that guy. I know, and I hate it. And you were happy to be that guy. You know, look how happy I am now about it. I'm not happy now because I didn't. It's not the kind of guy that I want to be. That I that I ever wanted to be. I evidently I wanted to be that guy at some point because I did it. Don't say evidently. Uh, I know. Say I wanted to be that guy. I did all of the things that that guy wanted. It, it grosses me up to say it. You say it. I wanted to be that guy. It makes me mad to say it. You know how I feel about it. You know how every normal person I know how I feel about, feel it, about it. I know how I feel about it now. I'm mad as my head and just hell at myself for ever wanting to be that guy. Is your family mad at you? Some are, some are. Some just, some pretend like they're mad at me because they don't want other people to think bad of them. What do you mean pretend? Yeah. What does that mean? They pretend to be mad at me. One of them pretends to be mad at me about it. Because of his in-laws. Because what his in-laws taking badly of them. Okay. And down the road, I'll tell you more about that. That's that fine. Guy, Paul, he, he doesn't pretend to be mad at me. Roy definitely does, isn't mad at me. Lori's not mad at me. Richard's not mad at me. They're upset that I that I did it. Uh-huh. They're not mad at me. They don't, they didn't take their love away. They didn't stop talking to me. They didn't, they didn't stop treating me like they've always treated me. <laughs> There's a lot of things you'll learn about me and my family. There's a lot to tell. I used to be really proud of my family. I used to be. Well, if there are people who don't accept you anymore because of what happened, that's okay. You see, that's, I've got a different opinion on that when it comes to family. Why? Because when you love someone, you, you accept what they've done and you try to help them through it. You don't, you don't walk away from them. Well, some people aren't able to accept it. Well, then they never really loved me, did they? That's not true. Or maybe some people can't accept it because they know they've done similar things and they don't want to be associated with it, with someone, with it when somebody has gotten caught and been put out in the public for that thing. Well, there's some people who could be so sickened by it that they don't ever want to hear your name or see your face again. Yeah, there are. And that's okay. It's not okay. It is okay, okay for me. No, it's not it's okay not... for you because it makes you feel bad. Yeah, it does. But your feelings aren't their feelings. It's not okay for me because I'm the one that brought it to a point that they don't like. I hate, I hate that. They don't have to accept it, Lauren. I know. I've got to accept it. No. You have to live within your own skin. And for survival, you have to process what happened. And acceptance does not make it okay. It doesn't mean if, if someone in your family, and I'm assuming you're referring to your brother that you won't mention, just because he doesn't accept it, he doesn't want to talk to you or have anything to do with you. That's not making him a bad guy. You'll understand more when down the road when I tell you more on that one. The, from the from my per, from my perspective now, and and I don't think that I'm going to see it differently. It doesn't really matter to me. What matters is everyone has the right to decide who they have in their life. It's kind of like if you have a family member who is an abusive alcoholic. There are some people who have been abused by them, and they're going to decide I don't want that person in my life. They're part of my family, but they've hurt me so badly that I'm done. In order for me to live, in order for my own health and happiness, I need to let that person go. I'm not going to speak to them. They're not in my life anymore. That's what I need to do in order to be okay. That person who is looking out for their own survival is not betraying the family. Your own life 
always has to be the most important. You have to look out for yourself. And I'm not saying that in a selfish way. I'm saying you have to take into consideration your own best interest and you have to make those the top priority because when you don't take care of yourself, you can't take care of anyone else. You can't love anyone else completely or in a healthy way. That's why I get let go with Tony. What? You're saying that you get upset with Tony, but ultimately you're the one who's allowing him in your life. You're the one who's going over there. You're the one making the call to go over there, making the offer, bringing Wendy something because that's going to appease her, bringing alcohol because then Tony will allow you into the home and hang out with him. Fucking sad. Why would I do that? Just fucking stupid. Well, you answer the question. You answer the question of why. Because once again, just like everything else, you know the answer. So mad myself for wanting to go over there. Well, that's not that's not the reason. I'm not hearing well, a reason. It's because I wanted to drink and forget. And you want to drink and forget. Yeah. Why not do that on your own at your home when you don't have the need to then get in your car and drive home? You're already going to be there. It's just someone to drink with. Okay. Don't to do a person to drink with. Why? Why is Tony a good person to drink with? Because he's a happy drunk. Because he allows you over to his house. Yeah. How many other people can you say that about? One. Right. That I well, one because I don't because I because I don't because I don't try to get to know anybody else. That's Elton. The difference with Elton is I go over there. Elton will buy beer too. But he's still allowing you to drive drunk. Yeah, I know. Okay, so what the fuck? I'm better off to drink alone. And I don't want to drink alone. I don't like drinking alone. And I don't want to get home. Yeah. I was making my own fucking story. Yeah. So your drunk ass walks into a store to buy more fucking beer. I can feel my blood pressure going crazy. I know. I I, I can hear your blood pressure going crazy. You know what makes it go crazy is that when presented with the question of why do you do that, your answer is, I don't know. And then when you're presented with the fact that eventually your luck is going to run out and you run over someone, you're going to cry like a little (laughs) fucking bitch. Those stupid fucking tears that everyone hates. The ones that you try to make, even when they're not real, just so that people can have sympathy for your ass. I'm not looking for sympathy. I'm looking well, you're for trying. not being confused. No, I'm not. What is confusing? What is confusing to you? Everything is confusing to me. Why? How I I've am. Been ta- How I am. I've been talking to I, you I now? know you've been talking to me. Well, what the fuck, Lauren? <laughs> you're the first one I've ever gone in depth with about this When shit. is it going to sink in? It sinks in. It's sinking that I'm, that I'm a piece of shit for what I did. That sank in a long time ago. What I can't get sinking is why the hell do I do this stupid shit all over again when I don't want to do it? Is it because you're fucking stupid? Is that what it is? No, it's not because I'm stupid. Are you, are you just a dumb piece of fucking shit who can't learn a goddamn motherfucking lesson? No. No? No. Oh, okay. I promise I'm never going to treat you like that again. I'm never going to drink again. I'm never, never, never. I hate when I do that. (laughs) I I do hate when I do that. (laughs) Oh, God. (laughs) I'm not lying to you when I tell you that I hate when I I do that. You don't hate it enough because you do it all the time. So yeah, I don't think it's going it. to change. It's going to change. I know I'm going to have to prove it to you, but it's, it's going to change. Why? Why is lo- it going to change I don't now? Like, because I don't like being like that, and I don't want to be to you like that. I like that to you. I've never wanted to be that kind of person. Here we go again. I never wanted to. <sighs> Here we go again. Lauren doesn't have any of his own fucking free will. Well, I do. And I'll prove it to you. I don't need you to prove it to me. Well, I need me to prove it to you. Prove it to yourself. 
prove it to yourself that you're not a fucking scumbag. How about you start there? I need to do that too. But it's important to me that I prove it to you too. You don't want to quit drinking. You didn't want to quit smoking. Yeah, I do. Well, no, I didn't want to quit smoking. But I did for four days. And I fucked it up today. But I'm going to quit again tomorrow. Why? Why bother? Well, I, because I don't want to smoke. I don't want. I don't want you to have to be around that shit. I'm not around it. No, but I don't want you to ever have to be around it. If you're with me. I, I'm not making plans to do that. I know, so you shouldn't be but, making plans either. Well. Because if you yeah. really wanted to quit, if that was something you really wanted to do, you would have just done it. it. It's not easy to do it. I know it's not easy. But I am trying to do it. And I do want to do it. There are a lot of things that are more dangerous, Lauren, like you getting into your car after you're drunk. I know. Than smoking. I know. (laughs) The point is, is that all of these things that you don't want to do are things that you actually do want to do. Being self-destructive. Yeah, it's it's completely self-destructive. Because if you think, if you take the, the matter of drunk driving on its own, how is that not enough? To make you not do it. The consequences of that are huge. Yeah, I know. It was part and of all it. you do Total is, is you, you, test, you test it every single time. You take everyone else's safety into your hands. And you're like, I wanted to go drinking. Well, you know, what do you want from me? Selfish. Do you see a trend? Yeah, I do. What's the trend? Being selfish and stupid. You're a selfish asshole. I'm not going to sugarcoat it for you. You don't deserve that. I don't expect you to. Yeah. I like that you put it like it is. Good. Well, you know it or not, it helps me that you put it like it like it is. It, it's shocking. It really is shocking. Like, that you're willing what, to do that all the time. Whether you believe me or not, I want to change. I don't like the person that I've been. You must like them on some level. No. You have I don't to. Like being, I don't you, like being self-destructive like that. You're getting something I don't like out what of it, I've though. Done. You're getting something out of it. What, more confusion? More problems? It's not confusion. We have already discussed that you're not confused. You're in denial. There's no confusion. I, yeah, you're right. There's no, there's no confusion. I hate myself right. for what I did. I hate well, myself for what I did. It's not just what you did, because, you know, I think when you're, when you're talking about that, you're talking about the sting. It's what yeah. you continue to do. When I say that, I know I'm talking about this thing. Because I hate myself for what I did. Great. But I'm talking about you driving drunk right now. I hate myself for doing that, too, because it's stupid. How can you hate yourself, then? Because you do it all the time. Selfish ignorance. Well, it's not ignorance, because ignorance means that you don't know. Well, yeah, that's true. Selfish stupidity. It's not even stupidity, because stupidity on a level is not knowing. You can't give yourself any kind of an out. It's just selfish. It's just selfish. Stop being so fucking selfish with everything. Everything with you is about being selfish. How you acted last night to me direct was selfish. Ridiculous. Childish. It's all about making baby Lorne feel better. Make me feel like you want me, and that's not gonna fucking happen. Jesus, you're so beautiful. I love it that you put it, that you put it straight. Don't just that's say that really... because you think somehow I'm gonna see you differently or in a better way. No, it's not. It's not why I say that. Okay. I say that because it's what I need. So it makes me think more. It makes me look deeper at myself and the things that I do. And the things I've done and the way I want to be. And the fact that you're selfish in everything you do. Yeah. To and the detriment of others. It. And how I want to change it. You make these declarations of change. Maybe that I are, need to change. But, you're, but the thing is, is that you don't change. You just make the declarations. That's what I mean when I say that I don't buy it. <laughs> I don't buy those words. I'm going to stop smoking. I'm not going to drink anymore. Okay, whatever. I just kind of roll my eyes. Uh, don't roll your eyes. Smoking is hard to do. It, it, it's hard to quit. But you're the one who's saying that you're quitting. I am. I am. I'm, I'm going to do it again tomorrow. 
I'm mad at myself for fucking up today. But I, I fucked up. The only thing I can do is try again tomorrow and try not to fuck up. The drinking, well, you have to, in order, in order to change anything, you have to look at it very deeply and honestly. And don't just throw up your hand like, oh, I fucked up. Oh, well, I'll try again tomorrow. When I was talking earlier about people not expecting anyone to be perfect. And when I say that, we're talking about things that are a lot lighter. Like, I'm not going to be in a good mood every day. That's impossible for anyone to do. I know. When you said that, there are things more about it. There are things that people should be 100% effective at like I'm not going to go out and commit murder today 100 percenter right here I'm not going to go out and drive my car after I'm intoxicated 100 percent I'm not going to walk into a bank and rob it 100 percent I'm not going to steal someone's car 100 percent all of these things are are things that are, are to be expected and it doesn't fall into the category of expecting someone to be perfect as if that expectation is, is uh, unrealistic. We have to look at, at situations for what they are and not just like toss it up and say, oh, just another day I fucked up again and I went over Tony's when I don't want to and I drove drunk when I don't want to and I drank when I don't want to and I smoked when I don't want to all the way down the line. When things are purposeful actions, you can't toss it up in there and say, oh, I wasn't perfect. Oh, well, I'll try again tomorrow. Failure in those regards don't fall into the category of you're just a human. Like I was saying about not being a ray of sunshine every single day or 100% productive every single day. Those fall into the category of you're just a human. Stuff happens. Sorry, it's too hard, but I'm going to. I know I'm going to show you that I'm going to. You have to try harder for you. You can't try harder for me. That's where this is all kind of displaced. So while your blame for things happening is put onto other people, when you do see something right or your successes, you put them onto other people too. And then what ends up happening is you will say, I had a bad night because of you. So I fucked up today and I went drinking and I drove after I did that. And that wouldn't have happened if you didn't do what you did. I know. I know the whole thing was, was my fault. And I know it was a stupid decision I made. They're repeatedly stupid. That's the problem. Why are you stupid every fucking day, man? <laughs> Sorry, it's just funny the way you said that. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's so frustrating. I'm going to make it less frustrating. For yourself. For myself and for you. And for everybody. Everybody How would you feel if you were driving down the street after a night at Tony's and you ran into your mom? I wouldn't be able to live myself. Mm -hmm. That's powerful. Think Think of things in terms of your mom because you love her and you don't want anything to happen. So when you think about like even the Betty thing, think about if there was someone who came to your mom's house took thousands and thousands of dollars from her. She happily gave it over because she was expecting this job to be done. And then he doesn't do it and he takes off with the money. How would you feel? I'd be so fucking pissed. Yeah. Would you have the expectation that that person's going to pay every penny back? Yeah, I would. Would you give a shit if they want to fix up their house? Or go to the auction and buy things for some yard sale. Or that they want to go drinking with their friends. No, I wouldn't. You wouldn't care. No, I wouldn't. So why is it okay for you to do that? Why is it okay that after all of these years you haven't paid her shit? It's not okay. So you probably would be out there fighting for her. I acknowledge this stuff. And stuff that I've done wrong. That I don't like that that I've been like that. But your answer to things is you'll you'll say that it happened and then you'll follow it up with, I don't like doing that. End of discussion. I hate that I did that. End of discussion. I, I do hate that I've done that. I hate everything that I've done wrong. I hate it. And it's hard for me to talk about 
things when I know what's going on in my head constantly. It, it, it's hard for me to talk about it. And there's not many people that I'll talk about a lot of things with. I've talked to Emma about some stuff. I've Anything that I talk to you about, I've never gone in depth with anybody. I know. You've, you've mentioned that before. I'm not talking about just this thing. I know. Anything that I talk, anything that I talk about with you from here on out is going to be deep shit that's in my head. Okay, good. And I've never gone, but I've never let anybody in that deep. Okay. I shut them off and, and and just not answer the questions or just say just say I don't know. Okay. Sometimes when I say uh, when I tell you I don't know, I don't mean I don't know right that minute when they have let me have meant to think about it or say something that's going to trigger something in my head so that I can actually get the answer out. Don't bother saying I don't know. Change that dialogue for yourself. Don't say I don't know because you do. What do you want me to say, though? You want me to say help me figure it out? Help me think about it? Yeah, that's what you have to do. When you say I don't know, that's another stupid thing that you have for your defense. I don't know. I was confused. Or you do things too. Let's talk about that. No one else ever ever has to admit what they do. That's such a baby thing to say. And that's kind of like where your thought processes are. They're very immature. Well, when, I, when I say something like yes, because I feel like I'm being attacked. But then why is your, your response to being attacked to not under, try to understand it better, but to then go and say <laughs> stupid shit all the time back. Yeah, probably because with Winnie, Winnie always made it feel like she was attacking. Well, you're the one who kept talking to her for over a year. And the things that I've heard from you weren't very flattering either. I know. I wasn't the best person. I wish it could have been better, but... Well, you, ball, you can't go backwards. You can't go backwards. I fucking hate when you say the whole thing bothered me. Well, it did bother me. It bothered me that, that, that the way we met was just, she was doing this whole thing for Xavier. It was just so hard to get that out of my head because what Xavier does. I should really just stop thinking about Xavier. There's an idea. And it would be great if you would stop calling other people Xavier, too. I know. I know it bothers other people. You say you don't want people playing games, but you're the one who plays the game. You try to manipulate. Just like with your text yesterday. I didn't count them all, but there's probably over 20 since I stopped responding. I knew you were looking for an answer, and I wasn't giving it to you. You're not going to play me like that. You're not smart enough. I don't want to play you. Don't try. You've been trying to. I've been trying to be an asshole. It's because you are one. I don't, I don't have any reason to be. Well, the reason you are one is because you are one. <laughs> That's your reason. <clears throat> no, I'm going to be honest with you. It's part of me being honest with you. Mm-hmm. Part of me not holding back what's in my head because I'm I'm afraid that something's going to happen that, like what happened with winning, or like happened with Ramona. Who's Ramona? You didn't mention her before. I figured you already knew about Ramona. Everybody else does. No, you said Amanda James, Vanessa, Anley Parker, and Winnie. Ramona was the one that... Well, evidently, she has something to do with Xavier. And... This was when I was, I actually, I I don't remember how long I knew Emma already, but Emma was part of it at the beginning, I think, she said, but Ramona played me for 10 months just to get information about me, to bring it back to Xavier, to put on the internet, with all this fucking shit that she was going to go on a date with the doctor and all this other shit, and when it wound up, she was actually... She was just playing me, and she was actually had a boyfriend that was that was living with her. She told me it was her brother that was living with her, or moved in with her. Or it was actually her boyfriend that moved in with her. And I'm surprised. It shocks the hell out of me that you didn't know about that already. I thought you did. I'm not going to know everything. Your whole life is fucked. Uh, it's just it's like a 
the sands through the hourglass. Here's Lauren's life. It's it's crazy. Yeah, it sucks the hell out of me that you don't know about that because that was a big thing on the internet. Okay, well, like I mean, I just scratched the surface. There's so much stuff, and and like I said, most of the stuff has to do with you being in your denial state and being angry at everyone else except for yourself. There were recordings of me and Ramona's conversations. I I, I talked to her every day on the phone. She'd be recording. How did she stand that? I didn't know that how I stand being recorded. Now, how did she stand talking to you every day on the phone? Uh, I have my headset on when I drive. Yeah, your cool headset. That's really cool. I don't yeah. have to hold the phone up to my ear. <laughs> yeah. And I have to have it because I drive a truck anyway. Because it's a law. You can't you have to have hands free. And if I hold the phone up to my ear, my hand goes numb. Because of yeah. looking when I was in the Air Force. Okay. I'd love to be able to talk to you like that every day, but I know you're busy. Fuck that. Yeah, well, that's because that's you live with your voice. You hear your voice all the time. I love <laughs> your voice. Right. It's comforting. And then when you talk to me, it's a completely different thing because it's you put it to me straight and you help me. The most important thing to me is that my helping you isn't a waste of my time. No, it's not a waste of your time. I'll guarantee you that. Okay. And I'll prove it to you. I mean, and you've you said that you've said a lot of that stuff, like proving it and. I know. I know everything. that I. I know that I messed up. Just but really, you're, I but it's really not wish messing that I can make up, you understand. Come, what I want you I to really, understand is it's not messing up. Because when you say mess up, you're just making it like a flippant thing. Like, not a big deal. You know what I mean? It. Right. I really wish I could, I, can, I don't know, I can't say, help you understand. I, I, I really wish, I guess that's the only way that I can say it. I would really wish that I help, could help you understand how much I really do not want to disappoint you or me or anybody else that I, is in my life, but especially you or me or mom. Well, cool. It means a lot to me to be able to, to show you how much I can change. You have a lot of work to do. I know. Like I a, know lot. Do. a lot. A <laughs> lot. <laughs> <laughs> I know I have a lot, of work, a lot of work to do, but I'm going to do it. All right. Can I go now? Yes, ma'am, you certainly can if you want to. Okay, bye.